We have Tomas de Vos. He is a diplomat, economist, and foresight practitioner. He will be diving into the power of change building tomorrow through innovation and creativity. But first up, we want to, of course, bring in this video introduction that's going to do all the work. Go ahead. Tomas de Bas is a diplomat, economist, and foresight practitioner. Tomas is a widely recognized public-private partnership authority who has played a leading role in promoting and institutionalizing the role of innovation and partnerships as a tool for advancing foreign policy and global development. He regularly gives keynotes, lectures, and talks about the future of governance and the intersection of foreign policy, business, and society. Tomas travels both internationally and domestically and has spoken at South by Southwest, Demo, Concordia Summit, and other notable conferences. Tomas is currently serving as the Secretary's Acting Special Representative for Global Partnerships at U.S. Department of State, providing thought leadership on future trends and partnerships related to economic growth, global finance, environment and sustainability governance, impact investing, and innovation. He has served under four Secretaries of State and his most notable partnership accomplishments include Goldline Accelerator, Demo Africa, Blockchain at State, Unreasonable Goals, Women in Science, and Fish Hackathon. Prior to joining the State Department, he was lead economist with the Overseas Private Investment Corporation and senior advisor at the United States Agency for International Development. Tomas is also actively engaged in his community. He is the founder and chairman of Startfield, a 501c3 local nonprofit organization on a mission to build and empower communities of innovators and creatives to spur economic development in Northern Virginia. Tomas also curates Smart Film, a unique international film festival that showcases short films shot entirely with smartphones and other mobile devices. He is also the founding dean and trustee of Awesome Foundation in Northern Virginia. Our diversity is an asset, and we should utilize it in a way to advance our causes around the world. Give it up for Tomas de Vos. Okay, take it away. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I didn't know, Ms. Finn said uh, there's going to be a video of uh, introduction for me, and I did not. I want to meet this guy. I have no idea who that is. Uh, but thank you, um, Ms. Finn and the team at uh, uh, YEP for inviting me. Uh, I had a chance to speak at uh, one of their seminars uh, a couple of years ago and I said to myself that probably would be the last time I would speak. At that time I think I was under 40 and thought that that would be the last time I'd be a quote-unquote youth guy to talk. But I want to thank them uh, uh, quite seriously for changing their name because I thought I was going to be joining Yazamun <laughs> Tochkova and now I'm still in Yep, so that's, that's awesome. Um, the other thing, what they told me was to speak English, but after eating that amazing food and that amazing music, I don't know how I'm going to do that in English. So, uh, uh, when uh, Masfin called me yesterday, actually, to, uh, to tell me that he wanted me to take uh, uh, Kana's uh, uh, speaking slot, I wasn't sure what to think of it. Doctor <laughs> ሄ <laughs> I think Leila, I think uh, Leila Dr. Sanai, Leila Noro Yekarachalish Masele. She's amazing. She's, uh, she defies physics. She's, she's two places at the same time. Uh, Dr. Maradam, but I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm going to be a little bit of a problem. I'm going to be a little bit of a problem. I'm going to be a little bit of a problem. I'm going to be a little bit of a problem. I'm going to be a little bit of a problem. I'm going to be a little bit of a problem. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not
በጥሩ ከተናገሩ ከሱ ነው ይገነክራል አ በፍታ ደሞ አ አጀስ መረራች ወለ ኢነሜዚንግ ጊቭ አር ላን ኦፍ ፕላስ ሺ ኢዝ ኢነሜዚንግ ስፒክ አሁን ደሆነ ትንቢ መናገር ፈልጋለሁ በብሪቲሾች የኦስካር የነሱ ባፍታ አዎርድ ይባላል አዲክ ኢትዮጵያ ስለቀር ብዙ ቦፍታ አዎርድ የሚባለው ጆርናሊዝም ይከፈታል አለ ይገምታል እና ሄፕ ሹድ ኮም ኢን ኢንስፒሬሽን ቱ አላ ኦፍ ፎክስ አም ኤ ዌ ኦን ዘ ፓተንት ኦፊስ ኦብቪስሊ አንድ ዚስ ኢዝ ዘ ሆም ኦፍ ኢኖቬሽን አሜሪካስ ኢኖቬሽን አር ዘር አር ላት ኦፍ አሜዚንግ ክሬቲቪቲ ፍሮም አሜሪካ ኤንድ ፍሮም አራውንድ ዘ ዎርልድ ዳት ሲትስ ኢን ዚስ ቢልዲንግ ሶ ኢትስ ፊሊንግ ዳት አይ ዋስ ቶልድ ቱ ቶክ አቦት ኢኖቬሽን Uh, and what my work at the US Department of State uh, I work on innovations around the world and uh, I have a very brief time so I want to kind of share with you the seven traits that I have seen in my travels around the world what innovation means and its implication to uh, to hopefully to Ethiopia and there are seven things what innovation needs uh, one is the first one is an observing eye when I say an observing eye እሰ ሾታላዊ ሰላም ይባል ነገር ታቃላችሁ አለ ሁሉም ነገር የሚያጣራ ማለት ነው አንድ ነገሮችን ካን ነገር ማገናኘት የሚችል ሰው ማለት ነው እኛ ሀገራችን ብዙ ሰው አለ እኔ እንኳን ሰፈር ልጆች አሉ ብዙ የሚያገናኙ ነገር እንኳን የሚያገናኙ እና ኦብዘርቪንግ አይ ኮነክቲንግ ዳት ስትልክ ነገር ነው ሌላው ደግሞ አ ኮንስተንት ሴንስ ኦፍ ዋንደር ዘ ሞስት ቢዩቲፉል ቱ ኢንግሊሽ ዎርድስ አይ ኖው ኢዝ አይ ዋንደር ኤንድ ዳት ሴንስ ኦፍ ዋንደር ኤንድ ስፔሻሊ ዳ ሴንስ ኦፍ ሂዩመር is an important to cultivate innovation and what we have in our community we have nothing but a sense of humor so it's an amazing community to come from and that is a, an ingredient for innovation the other one is growth mindset and i know dr marat's going to talk about this there is an amazing book by carl dweck called mindset if you ever get a chance to read it please read it it's about this uh sense that you know the the the, the half full kind of person the half the glass is half full mentality that there is always something that you could do better so that sense of that that you can accomplish more and that's an ama- that's a that's an important thing to have the other one is collaboration obviously any innovation that you do is a byproduct of collaboration and uh, there is a south african term called ubuntu uh, which means i am because we are which is we is greater than i when you have that mind of mindset then it helps you to work with others to to create innovation and there, i want to give you an example uh the draft horse uh that pulls weight uh um one single horse pulls 8000 pounds one single horse two horse you would imagine would be 16000 but two draft horse could pull 24000 what that tells you is what collaboration means but the most important insight in that is not the, what they could do 24000 but if two horses are trained well and they coordinate well they can actually pull 36 uh pounds of weight so if you're where if you're work coordinated well uh um and in sync with each other you can actually pull more than you weight and that's an important metaphor on collaboration it's not just 1 plus 1 equals to 2 1 plus 1 is greater than 2 so that's an important thing to have which we come from a sense of a community based society so which is an important thing to to have the other one is empathy uh, which is yelelaun so chigirna mawak malatno we are a community and i uh, i know dr sanai heard me saying this uh, we have this word called empathy i have no idea how to spell it but it is an amazing thing that uh, we can empathize with others it doesn't matter what we do uh, but and the nagar hona katabal ngo ibala so mi motim biwodkem uh hona gar bemo inalalen so that's 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 a sense of empathy that we should emphasize the other one is risk tolerance modek masasat wayin man nagar mohon inde nawra lamayet malatno uh which is failure is always an option uh, there is a quote i think attributed to uh nelson mandela that says sometimes you win sometimes you learn you never lose it's an important thing to realize that you never lose by trying so innovation requires a sense of almost the desire to fail because uh no one gets it the first time no one gets it even the second time so uh benya bahalachinum so sisasat especially liji yallu 
ዓለም አቋጣት ነው አይዟችሁ ማለት አለብንና that sense of failure uh, i'm not i'm not advocating uh, failure is something to be celebrated about but it's something that that actually could create innovation after it and the last one is is what we call foresight which is basically future thinking which is the most important one um because one any whether it's we're talking about products or services no one makes a product for today and if you made a product for today it's only as good as for tomorrow so you have to make products or thought process or policy for that matter that thinks about the future and that's something we don't really think a lot in our uh, society and it's something i really want us to to think about uh which is essentially future proofing everything to ensure that whatever we do today is is actually setting us up for 20 years from now 30 years from now and one way to do that is um for for all of you you have iPhones and all these fancy iWatches and all those things that you see are a byproduct of sci-fi uh writings that happened back in 40s 50s 60s if you're a big a fan of Star Trek and Star Wars you have seen the episodes of the iWatches the iPhones the sliding doors and all those things at that time they were an impossible things they were nothing cannot fathom it. but if you can ask you know Steve Jobs all these great minds who created these innovations they all have one thing in common they are a big fan of sci-fi so they've seen it somewhere so impossible things are hard to imagine so we do have to encourage our kids our youth to get into sci-fi fantasy comics and things like that uh, the black panther movie how many of you have seen black panther yes it took a while but that was written in 1977 someone imagined a fictional country in africa some say that it was based on ethiopia um about an advanced eco- an advanced economy an advanced stage like that so we do have to encourage our youth to actually write things that are completely my sound out of this world uh now when they come up with stuff like that man no ina so ye budget away not to sabal no salon dat you actually encourage them to think the impossible because that's the only way uh they can write that history that 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 predict that future in that sense and the storytelling is part of it and i know uh, dr mary and i were talking about some of the two books you wrote and i think they're here i, I don't want to shamely plug his book but there are two books here that he wrote uh, about storytelling uh there's a great uh, quote from pluto that says those who tell the stories rule the world and uh sci-fi what i'm talking about is storytelling uh that are completely fictional but it's based on some distant future reality that we should be encouraging people to think about. Um uh the the, la- the the other thing I want to talk about is um uh the type of people we want to encourage are people who are completely unreasonable who would not take no for an answer. The best innovators are those who say no to the conventional wisdom. And I know you hear me quoting a lot of people. This is my favorite quote from uh, the Irish playwright George Bernard uh, Bernard Shaw. that says please listen to me very carefully it's an amazing quote that says the reasonable person adapts himself to the world the unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself therefore all progress depends on the unreasonable person so i encourage you to encourage your kids to be unreasonable for them not to take the world in the way it is but in the way they want to see it So that's an important thing for you to remember. And there are folks in our midst in our society in our community that are essentially doing that. And one is the one in front of me, my good friend Solo Casa right here, who you guys know from EBS. Give him a round of applause right here. <laughs> He wrote a book called uh, Grimta Cytic, right? I uh, I actually had a uh, he sent me a one chapter of that book. Uh, that talks about the future what that would look like and uh, he gave me one week i took a month i still did not finish it that's when i realized ya wogi dia shifta mone ni anina wokut ya chikalat strapo setu inskawan aldan kumna amarnya oregak yale no kene kamako balai boklo bet kamako balai no amarnya but i would encourage you guys to read his book he is he's an amazing uh, uh, proponent of science and technology and innovation and and that's a key thing and the other thing that i want to the last thing i want to say is 
we think about innovation in some kind of laboratory setting, that we think we have to have these fancy places, uh, we have to build so people can think innovatively. And the space matters, and I'm not contending that, but I'll be honest with you, every innovation that I've heard started in my neighborhood, Baklovit, Kwasit All the seven things I told you about, I learned it when I was a young kid playing soccer, not with a normal soccer ball, but with something that's made out of socks. I learned how to take a risk, how to be innovative, how to be collaborative with others. All those things were thought to me on the streets of Addis. But somewhere in the way to getting to uh, an adulthood, it gets lost. We're told, don't do this way, you need to be this way. And I just want to make sure that we take those things into account, that you don't have to have fancy things for you to teach your kids your own mindset to think about how to be innovative because it's in front of you. We are already living it, we just need to manifest it in that way. And that's the reason I'm giving you the soccer um, example because my boys who I play soccer on Sundays are on that side. And they can attest that I take risks, but they probably will tell you I don't pass the ball. <laughs> so at that moment, I'm gonna pass this microphone. Thank you very much.